What does Marcellus Wallace look like? What? What country are you from? What? what? What ain't no country I ever heard of. They speak English in what? What? English, motherfucker! Do you speak it? Yes. Then you know what I'm saying. Yes. Describe what Marcellus Wallace looks like. Pulp Fiction is definitely one of Quentin Tarantino's most famous and best movies. It has an all-star cast including Samuel L. Jackson, John Travolta, Uma Thurman and many more. Today we've selected three scenes for you to learn with and make sure you watch all the way until the end so that you can test your knowledge with our fun quiz. Because here at Learn English with TV series, we help you to learn fast English without getting lost, without missing the jokes and without subtitles. Just like Eva who says that she's never loved learning English so much and is becoming addicted to our channel. So if you want to become more motivated to learn English, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell down below. That way you won't miss a single one of our new lessons. You know the funniest thing about Europe is? What? It's a little different, too. I mean, they got the same shit over there that they got here, but it's just, just there, it's a little different. Example. All right, well, you can walk into a movie theater in Amsterdam and buy a beer. And I don't mean just like a little paper cup, I'm talking about a glass of beer. And in Paris, you can buy a beer in McDonald's. And you know what they call a, a, a quarter pounder with cheese uh, in Paris? They don't call it a quarter pounder with cheese? Oh, man, they got the metric system. They wouldn't know what the fuck a quarter pounder is. And what do they call it? They call it the Royale with cheese. Royale with cheese. That's right. What do they call a Big Mac? Big Mac's a Big Mac, but they call it Le Big Mac. Le Big Mac. <laughs> <laughs> what do they call a Whopper? I don't know. I didn't go on a Burger King. You know what they put on french fries in Holland instead of ketchup? Or what? Yeah. Mayonnaise? Uh, hey. <laughs> I've seen them do it, man. They fucking drown them in this shit. thing about Europe is. You probably know the most common meaning of funny, which is something you find amusing or that makes you laugh. Another more advanced use of this word is as an adjective that means unusual, strange or difficult to explain. You know what I felt funny about this job right off? As soon as I felt that I should have said no thank you and walked, but I didn't fucking listen. What's in the case? My boss is dirty laundry. Your boss makes you do his laundry? When he wants it clean. Sounds like a shit job. Funny, I was thinking the same thing. What? It's a little different, too. I mean, they got the same shit over there that they got here, but it's just, just there, it's a little different. Exactly. Shit can be used to mean things or stuff. Enough! You better start talking, asshole. Because we got shit we need to talk about. Of course, this is not a very polite word, so you should only use it if you're completely sure it won't offend anyone. <laughs> what did I tell you about whining? You whine, you don't eat. I will throw this shit in the trash. I don't want to, but I will. Example. All right, well, you can walk into a movie theater in Amsterdam and buy a beer. Walk into is a phrasal verb that we often use instead of the verb enter. You can also say go into. Suddenly, I mean, you just can't walk into a restaurant, roll the joint, and start puffing away. I mean, they want you. In American English, the movie theater, or simply the theater, is what in the UK we call the cinema. This word can also be rather tricky to pronounce. In British English, it's theater. In American English, theater. And I don't mean just like a little paper cup. Did you catch the strange way he pronounced and I don't mean? And I don't mean just like a little paper cup. I'm talking this is connected speech. It's a shortened and more connected form of and I don't mean. However, this type of pronunciation is very informal. Some people associate this type of pronunciation with street talk or with a lack of education. The way you could say this is how he said it, but pronouncing the D in don't. Other aspects of connected speech present in this sentence is the drop of the D in and and the T in don't. And I don't mean just like a little paper cup. I'm talking about. 
listen to a few other examples of how people pronounce and I don't plus a verb. You'll notice there's a variety of ways different people say this. And I don't want any talk about yourself personally. Yeah, but it's my money and I don't need no fucking partners. I don't dig him. And I don't dig the vibe he brings on a set. And in Paris, you can buy a beer at McDonald's. And you know what they call a, a quarter pounder with cheese uh, in Paris? The quarter pounder is a hamburger sold by McDonald's and it's named that way for containing a patty with the weight of a quarter of a pound. The other famous McDonald's hamburger is the Big Mac, which is even bigger. They don't call it a quarter pounder with cheese? Oh man, they get the metric system. They wouldn't know what the fuck a quarter pounder is. The metric system is a way of measuring weight, volume and distance using grams, litres and metres. The imperial system is based on the ounce, pound, etc. to measure weight. The quarter pounder hamburger mentioned in this clip is approximately 113 grams. To measure distance, countries that use this system use feet, yards, miles, etc. You know what they put on french fries in Holland instead of ketchup? Or what? Mayonnaise? Uh, hey. <laughs> I've seen them do it, man. They fucking drown them in this shit. Yeah. Here's an interesting cultural insight. Depending on where you're from, you might use more mayonnaise with certain foods than people do in America. By the way, can you pronounce this word correctly? It's mayonnaise. He then says people in France drown the fries in mayonnaise. If you drown food in something, you cover it, probably with too much liquid or a creamy substance. Example, the fish was drowned in a rich sauce. I've seen them do it, man. They fucking drown them in this shit. Yeah. We say yuck to show that we think something is very unpleasant. We use a similar word to say the opposite. Yummy. Vanilla Coke. Mm. Yummy. You think I can have a sip of that? So far, we've not just learned vocabulary and pronunciation, but we've also learned quite a lot of cultural aspects. In our Fluent with Friends course, we explore a variety of cultural scenarios as experienced by the beloved six characters of the series. You'll also learn thousands of words we really use in our everyday speech, understand how natives really speak, use correct pronunciation, and laugh along with all the jokes. So you can try that absolutely free with our three-part masterclass. You can learn more and sign up by clicking up here or down in the description box below. What's her name? Mia. Mia. How do Marcel's and her meet? I don't know. However people meet people. She used to be an actress. Oh, really? Did she do anything out of scene? And I think her biggest deal was she starred in a pilot. Pilot? What's a pilot? Well, you know the shows on TV? I don't watch TV. Yeah, but you are aware that there's an invention called television, and on this invention they show shows, right? Yeah. Well, the way they pick TV shows is they make one show. That show's called a pilot. And then they show that one show to the people who pick shows, and on the strength of that one show, they decide if they want to make more shows. Some get chosen and become television programs. Some don't. Come nothing. She started one of the ones that became nothing. What's her name? Mia. Mia. How do Marcel's and her meet? I don't know. However people meet people. You probably know that however means but or nevertheless. Example, I spent a lot of money on my trip. However, I don't regret doing it. In the sentence of this clip, it means in whatever way. Example, you can do it however you like. She used to be an actress. Oh, really? Did she do anything out of scene? And I think her biggest deal was she starred in a pilot. Pilot? What's a pilot? If someone stars in a film, television show, etc., they are one of the main characters in it. But I haven't been a full-time stuntman for a while now, and from where I'm standing, 
Going to Rome to star in movies does not sound like the fate worse than death that you seem to think it is. Come on now. Deal can mean many different things. Even the collocation big deal has many different meanings and uses. In this case, he means that the pilot they're talking about was the most significant role she had as an actress. In two of the next three clips, deal is used in its literal meaning, that is, an agreement. Can you guess in which clip it's used to mean something important? It's a custom here in the South. Once a business deal has concluded that the two parties shake hands, you lost all your L.A. privileges. Deal? Deal. All right, look, if it's no big deal to be Mr. Pink, you want to trade? Hey. Well, you know the show's on TV? I don't watch TV. Yeah, but you are aware that there's an invention called television, and on this invention they show shows, right? Yeah. If you're aware that a situation exists, you realize or know that it exists. Example, the children are aware of the danger of taking drugs. If you're enjoying this lesson and would like to learn more about how to remember new vocabulary, then I highly recommend this lesson I made on the Real Life English channel. You can click up here or down in the description box below to watch it next. Well, the way they pick TV shows is they make one show. That show's called a pilot. Pick, in this case, means to choose a person or thing. Example, I don't know which color to pick. And then they show that one show to the people who pick shows. And on the strength of that one show, they decide if they want to make more shows. If you do something on the strength of something, such as advice, you do it because you have been influenced by it or believe it. Example, I read this book on the strength of my brother's recommendation. In this clip, however, he uses this expression to mean that the show gets picked based on how good it is. I spent months trying to build a coalition. All on the strength of two things. A nuclear deal with Iran and detente with Russia. So, Marsala said you just got back from Amsterdam. Sure did. How long were you there? Uh, just over three years. I go there about once a year to chill out for a month. No kidding. I didn't know that. Why would you? I heard you did a pilot. That was my 15 minutes. What was it? It was a show about a team of female secret agents called Fox Force 5. What? Fox Force 5. Fox as in we're a bunch of foxy chicks. Force as in we're a force to be reckoned with. And five as in there's one, two, three, four, five of us. The character I played, Raven McCoy, background was she grew up raised by circus performers. According to the show, she was the deadliest woman in the world with a knife. And she knew a zillion old jokes her grandfather, an old vaudevillian, taught her. And if we would have got picked up, it would have worked in a gimmick where every show, I would have told another joke. You know any animal jokes? Well, I only got the chance to say one because we only did one show. Tell me. It's corny. Don't be that way. Tell me. Nah, you wouldn't like it and I'd be embarrassed. You'd be emb You told like 50 million people and you can't tell me? I promise I won't laugh. That's what I'm afraid of, Vince. That's not what I meant. You know it. Well, now I'm definitely not going to tell you because it's been built up too much. <sighs> what a jip. Marsala said you just got back from Amsterdam. Yeah. Sure did. Earlier, we learned the phrasal verb version of enter, which is walk in. Here, we see the more idiomatic alternative to return, get back. Example, I get back from work at six. Vincent then answers. Sure did. 
by which he means yes or yes I did. However, we generally use sure do or sure did a bit differently, sometimes to mean of course or certainly or definitely. Well, I didn't say they could prove it, but they sure did think it out loud, didn't they, Major? How long were you there? Uh, just over three years. I go there about once a year to chill out for a month. To chill out means to relax, spend time doing nothing in particular, or to not allow things to upset you. It's also used to tell someone to relax, as in this example. Shut up, shoo, 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 shoo. you're making my friend Ted here nervous. Chill out, man, <laughs> chill out, dude. Pay no attention to the warm in here, he's just. I go there about once a year to chill out for a month. No kid, I didn't know that. As a verb, to kid means to say something that's not true, especially as a joke. Rick, how you doing? It's good to see you. How's the wife doing? <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> we also often say no kidding to show surprise to what someone just said. And I gotta tell you, I came damn close to being in the 14th fist of McCluskey. No, no kidding. Yeah. I heard you did a pilot. That was my 15 minutes. Here, she means her acting role was her 15 minutes of fame, meaning a short period of time where she was famous or somewhat famous. What was it? It was a show about a team of female secret agents called Fox Force 5. What? Fox Force 5. Fox is in where a bunch of foxy chicks. Four. Foxy means sexually attractive and chick is a synonym for girl or young woman. <coughs> What's the name of the chick who played Christy Love? Pam Greer. No, it wasn't Pam Greer. Pam Greer was the other one. Keep in mind that chick can be offensive to some people. Chicks. Force, as in we're a force to be reckoned with. If something is to be reckoned with, or a force to be reckoned with, it's worth taking seriously because of being powerful, important, or good. Example, everybody thought they wouldn't win a match, but they've proven to be a force to be reckoned with character I played Raven McCoy. Her background was she grew up raised by circus performers. Raise means to look after your children and help them grow. In the UK, we often also say bring up. Example, he was raised in a small town. She was brought up by her grandmother. A performer is an actor, musician, etc. who entertains people. The verb to perform means that actually, to entertain people. A circus performer might be a clown or acrobat, for example. And she knew a zillion old jokes. Her grandfather, an old vaudevillian, taught her. A zillion means a very large number of things. Example, I've seen that movie a zillion times. Vaudeville was a type of theatre entertainment common in the 1800s and early 1900s that included music, dancing and jokes. A vaudevillian is someone who performed in shows like these. Now, pay attention to how she pronounces would have. And if we would have got picked up, it would have worked in a gimmick where every show, I would have told another joke. For many learners, mastering the reduction of the word have is important for improving pronunciation. And if you're interested, your accent as well. Whether you're learning American or British English, have usually reduces to a v sound, would have, or a schwa and a v sound, of, would have, or it's reduced to just a schwa sound, woulda. This is how she says it. Listen again. And if we would have got picked up, it would have worked in a gimmick where every show I would have told another joke. You'll also hear this same reduction of have in other modal verbs such as should, must, might and could. You know, I must have had at least 12 people teach me that goddamn game. None. None. Yeah, no, dude, you no. don't know it could have gone here, could have no, gone I here. Don't... You don't... might have just woke up. And if we would have got picked up, it would have worked in a gimmick where every show I would have told another joke. Work in or work into means to add one thing or idea to another or include one thing or idea in another. Example, you need to work more nuts into your diet. 
A gimmick is a trick or something unusual that you do to make people notice someone or something. On TV, sometimes characters have a gimmick. For example, in Friends, Joey's gimmick is that he's popular with women. Well, I only got the chance to say one because we only did one show. Tell me. It's corny. We usually say a joke is corny if it isn't very funny because it's been used so many times before. Don't be that way, tell me. Nah, you wouldn't like it and I'd be embarrassed. You'd be embarrassed. You told like 50 million people and you can't tell me? I promise I won't laugh. That's what I'm afraid of, Vince. That's not what I meant, you know it. Well, now I'm definitely not gonna tell you because it's been built up too much. <sighs> what a jip. She says the joke has been built up too much because they've talked about it for too long now, so she feels that for this reason, there's no fun in telling the joke now. A jip is a situation in which you feel you have been cheated. Here, he's a bit bothered that she told him that her character told jokes if she's not willing to share one of those jokes. So now it's time to watch without subtitles and to test your knowledge with our fun quiz. But before, make sure if you haven't already that you've hit that subscribe button and the bell down below so that you don't miss out on any of our new lessons. But you know what the funniest thing about Europe is? What? Which option below is not related to the advanced meaning of funny? Strange, unusual, entertaining. little differences. I mean, they got the same shit over there that they got here, but it's just, it's just there, it's a little different. Example. All right, well, you can walk into a movie theater in Amsterdam and buy a beer. And I don't mean just like a little paper cup, I'm talking about a glass of beer. And in Paris, you can buy a beer at McDonald's. And you know what they call a, a, a quarter pounder with cheese uh, in Paris? They don't call it a quarter pounder with cheese? Oh, man, they got the metric system. They wouldn't know what the fuck a quarter pounder is. And what do they call it? They call it the uh, Royale with cheese. Royale with cheese. That's right. What do they call a Big Mac? Big Mac's a Big Mac, but they call it Le Big Mac. Le Big Mac. <laughs> <laughs> what do they call a Wobble? I don't know. I didn't go on a Burger King. You know what they put on French fries in Holland instead of ketchup? Or what? Yeah. Mayonnaise? Uh, hey. <laughs> I seen them do it, man. They fucking drown them in this shit. Yeah. What's her name? Mia. Mia. How do Marcel's and her meet? I don't know. However people meet people. She used to be an actress. Oh, really? Did she do anything out of scene? And I think her biggest deal was she starred in a pilot. Pilot? What's a pilot? Well, you know the shows on TV? I don't watch TV. Yeah, but you are aware that there's an invention called television, and on this invention they show shows, right? Yeah. Well, the way they pick TV shows is they make one show. That show's called a pilot. Then they show that one show to the people who pick shows. And on the strength of that one show, they decide if they want to make more shows. Some get chosen and become television programs. Some don't, become nothing. She started one of the ones that became nothing. So, Marsala said you just got back from Amsterdam. Sure did. How long were you there? Uh, just over three years. I go there about once a year to chill out for a month. No kidding. I didn't know that. Why would you? I heard you did a pilot. That was my 15 minutes. What was it? It was a show about a team of female secret agents called Fox Force 5. What? Fox Force 5. Fox as in we're a bunch of foxy chicks. Force as in we're a force to be reckoned with. If something is to be reckoned with, it is something that needs improvement, a lesson to be learned, worth taking seriously. Five is in this one, two, three, four, five of us. The character I played, Raven McCoy, her background was she grew up raised by circus performers. According to the show, she was the deadliest woman in the world with a knife. And she knew a zillion old jokes her grandfather, an old vaudevillian, taught her. And if we would have got picked up, it would have worked in a gimmick where every show, I would have told another joke. 
What does work in mean? To add something, to work hard, to stay home. You know any animal jokes? Well, I only got the chance to say one because we only did one show. Tell me. It's corny. Don't be that way. Tell me. Nah, you wouldn't like it and I'd be embarrassed. You'd be embarrassed. You told like 50 million people and you can't tell me? I promise I won't laugh. That's what I'm afraid of, Vince. That's not what I meant. You know it. Well, now I'm definitely not going to tell you because it's been built up too much. <sighs> what a jip. As the title of this movie, it tells us it's a story set a long time ago. Although in the case of Tarantino's movie, it is probably to add a certain feeling of enchantment. I'm Rick Dalton. That's your son? No, that's my stunt double, Cliff Booth. Alright, what's the matter, partner? 